Alright, welcome to section 2.5, Marginal Cost and Revenue. This is going to be a short video and then we will be done with chapter 2. So first we're going to start with two definitions. We have the marginal cost, which if we remember when we first started discussing uh, marginal cost and revenue, that this is the cost to produce one additional item. Okay, so this is the cost to produce to produce one additional item. Alright, but now we're going to start looking at these in terms of derivatives. So we call marginal cost MC and that's the derivative of the cost function and we can approximate this by evaluating the cost function at one more unit and then subtracting it uh, from being evaluated at um, just Q units. Alright, so this is the derivative of the cost function. That's our marginal cost. And then we have marginal revenue. All right, so again, this is the amount of revenue gained or lost with one additional item, okay? The revenue gained or lost with one additional item. Okay, so this is our marginal revenue, which if the marginal cost was the derivative of the cost function, I bet you can guess that the marginal revenue will be the derivative of the revenue function. And we can approximate it the exact same way as our cost function. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our first example. We have that Radio House finds that their cost function can be modeled by this function, c is equal to 1.25 raised to the q plus 10. And we are to estimate their marginal cost for a production level of 20 radios. So q is our number of units, so that's our 20 radios. All right, and we know that we need the marginal cost. So our marginal cost, well, that's just the derivative of our cost function and we can evaluate this at our cost function evaluated at q plus 1 um, minus, sorry, minus our cost function evaluated at q. So we just need to plug in 20 for our q values. So this is approximately the cost function evaluated at 21 and subtract the cost function evaluated at 20. So this is exactly 1.25 raised to the 21 plus 10 minus parentheses 1.25 raised to the 20th plus 10. All right. And if we go ahead and throw this in a calculator, we will end up with 21.68. So our marginal cost is about $22 per one radio. Dollars per radio. All right. Example two. Let the revenue function, R of Q, be in dollars per cat toys. Okay, so part A is what are the units on the marginal revenue? Well, marginal revenue is our derivative of our revenue function. And we could go ahead and write this in our Leibniz notation. So this is derivative of revenue with respect to the quantity of items, right? If this helps us with our units, so our units 
our dollars per cat toy. Okay. And part B asks, what is the practical meaning of the marginal revenue equals 4 when Q is equal to 10? All right, so our practical meaning is that after making 10 toys, the revenue will increase by four dollars per toy. All right, because our marginal revenue, that's our derivative of the revenue function, so it's positive here, it's four, which means we are increasing. And we are increasing by four dollars per cat toy. All right, next we're going to look at this graph in example three. So this graph shows the following cost and revenue functions for a company, where Q is in thousands of items and the price is in thousands of dollars. So for each given production level, we are to state whether the company is making or losing money and whether or not the company should increase or decrease production in order to increase profit. Right, and remember, our profit is our revenue minus our cost. So revenue is all of the money um, earned, but then you have to pay for the supplies, you have to pay the employees, you have to do all of your costs, and whatever you have left over, that is your profit. All right, so part A says at 500 items, we have to say what's happening at 500 items. Well, since Q is in thousands, this one here is 1,000. So this is 500 items. All right, so right here, this is what's happening. Those are our two points at 500 items. Okay, and we're supposed to see, is the company making or losing money at this exact point? Well, our revenue function is the solid blue line, and the cost function is the red line with the squares. So, at 500 items, our revenue is slightly greater than our cost. Just a little bit, right? So the company is making a, a little bit of money. Okay. Should the company increase or decrease production in order to increase profit? Well, Q is our number of units, so that would be our production level. So Q is increasing in this direction. All right. And so if we're going from 500 units and we are increasing, it looks like our difference here is going to get larger, which means our revenue is going to be even that much bigger than the cost function. So our profits should increase as our production increases up to a certain point, right? Up to this point, we should stop increasing. Uh, if, if we started increasing up to there, we got too far, we need to come back, right? So the company should increase production to make a larger profit, right? All right, let's look at 1,500 items. So this is 1,500 here. So our two points here and here. Again, it looks like our company is making money. It still looks like our revenue is above our cost. So revenue is still above cost. Okay, so the company is again making money. If the company increases production any more, then they're going to get to the range where the costs start skyrocketing, right? And the cost gets way too big for the revenue. 
So they're not going to make any more money if production increases. All right, so they should not increase production, but still it looks like they might make a little bit more money if we decrease production to this sweet spot here, right? Where it looks like they're making the most amount of money. So the company should decrease production. All right, and part C is at 2,500 items. At 2,500 items, we are up here, here and here, where our cost is way bigger than our revenue, right? Cost is way bigger than revenue. So here the company is losing money. All right, and there is no hope if they keep producing more and more items here. Instead, they need to back off their production all the way to this area where our revenue is again higher than our cost. All right, so the company should decrease production. A lot, right? <laughs> decrease production to make more money. All right, so example four says, use the given cost function to answer the following questions. So this graph here is our cost function. Again, units uh, along the bottom and cost along the y-axis. And A asks us to estimate the marginal cost for Q is equal to five and interpret what this means practically. So let's remember the marginal cost is the derivative of the cost function, right? Marginal cost is the derivative of the cost function, which is the slope of the tangent line, right? In this case, at Q is equal to five. So Q is equal to five is right here. You could go ahead and break out my ruler, see if it'll not be super finicky today. Something like that, and draw a line there for our tangent line. And we want to estimate the slope of this, right? So it looks like we go up one, up two, over one. So it'll be two over one, which is just two, right? So our marginal cost at five, which is our derivative, at Q is equal to five is approximately two. Now, what does this mean practically? All right, well, this means that the cost is increasing by two dollars, oops, I gotta move my, two dollars per unit. It doesn't tell us what this cost function is selling. All right, so two dollars per unit. So part B says, is the marginal cost greater at Q is equal to 10 or Q is equal to 35? So we gotta go measure the marginal cost at 10 and at 35. So at 10 and at 35. So we'll, break, we'll bring the ruler back over. For our tangent line at 10, and then our tangent line at 35, Okay, and we could go ahead and count and try to estimate these, although that's, um, we weren't specifically asked to estimate them, but we can just go ahead and look at them and definitely say that the tangent line at 35 is much steeper than the tangent line at 10, right? So the marginal cost at Q is equal to 35 is greater. 
All right. And then part C asks at approximately what production level is marginal cost equal to zero? So again, the marginal cost is our derivative, right? So where is our derivative equal to zero? It's wherever we have a horizontal tangent line or wherever our function levels off a bit, which looks like it occurs right about here, right? At Q is equal to 20. All right, so at Q is equal to 20. All right, and I told you it would be short. We're already at our last example, example number five. So Goods R Us finds the marginal cost per 100 teddy bears at a production level of 200 teddy bears is $124, and the marginal revenue is $130. Would it be wise for Goods R Us to move forward with the production of the 100 additional teddy bears? Why or why not? Well, let's go ahead and observe the marginal profit. All right, so the marginal profit, marginal profit, well, again, that would be the derivative of our profit function, right? And our profit function, like I said earlier, profit function is just our revenue minus our costs, okay? So in this case, our marginal profit is only going to increase by six dollars. So if the revenue was 130 and we subtract 124, right, we're only left with six. So this tells us profit will increase by six dollars if they choose to go ahead and move forward with producing these extra hundred teddy bears. So it kind of depends where the company is. If they are currently making no money producing these 200 teddy bears and moving forward and producing 100 extra teddy bears is going to get them to $6 profit, then of course they should probably do that because even a $6 profit is better than no money. All right, but if they're already making $2,000 at the production level that they're at, increasing by an extra 100 teddy bears and increasing by only $6 is maybe not what they wanna do. All right, so it kind of just depends. So it depends on where the company is at if they need the extra six dollars or not. All right, so that is the end of section 2.5 and that is the end of chapter 2 and I'll see you in chapter 3.